Hi. In this short video, I'm going to show you the StreamSets data synchronization feature pushing data into Hive on Azure Data Lake. So um, you might recognize this pipeline. It's basically uh, the same pipeline as from the uh, drifting data tutorial where we push it into a Hadoop file system. But what I've done here is uh, I've replaced the Hadoop FS destination with Azure Data Lake Store. And I only really had to make a couple of changes to the rest of the pipeline to accommodate this. So my origin is exactly the same. I'm just using the uh, JDPC query origin for simplicity here, querying a single table. I could equally use the uh, multi-table origin here, or even um, the MySQL bin log, for example. And the first change is in the Hive metadata processor. I just have to use the correct URL to talk to Hive on uh, Azure HD Insight. So I've got an HD Insight cluster uh, running Hive. And that's backed by uh, Azure Data Lake. And then similarly in the Hive Metastore destination, I give it that same uh, URL so that it can send the metadata, those uh, create table, alter table commands uh, straight to Hive running on HD Insight in uh, Azure. I had to copy the uh, Hadoop config to a local directory. Uh, I've actually got uh, StreamSets data collector running here on my laptop. So that's that directory there. And looking at the Azure Data Lake Store uh, destination, well, this is configured very similarly to uh, in the ADLS tutorial where I ingest um, just CSV data and push it into Azure Data Lake Store. The key thing here is in the uh, output file tab that I'm pushing it into clusters SDC tutorial and then the target directory attribute that's set on the record because in uh, ADLS terms, the uh, directory, the Hadoop directory is kind of offset uh, under this path, this clusters SDC tutorial. And from there, it's just the same as in the uh, data synchronization uh, tutorial. It's uh, we're writing in Avro format. So uh, with that, let's have a look at what we're going to actually synchronize across. And here in MySQL, I've got uh, a shipping events table. So four columns, a uh, couple of IDs, a uh, time and uh, an event type. And you can see I've got three records there already. And we can have a look over in Hive. And uh, if I say describe shipping events, then uh, we can see that uh, there's nothing there uh, in Hive at all. OK, so uh, let's set the pipeline running. It's going to take a few seconds. It's got to read the schema and data from MySQL, read the schema from Hive, um, reconcile them, and then write the new schema into Hive. And there it is. So you'll notice that we read in three records and we wrote four records. Okay, so if we look at, if we drill into this Hive metadata, we can see that um, read in three records wrote three records to output one to ADLS and wrote one record to the Hive Metastore. So that's the create table uh, command. Now, if we just stop the pipeline here, we can go over to uh, the data lake. And if we look in shipping events, this is the new uh, directory it's created. There's two files there. And uh, we can't really look at those here because it's binary data. But we should be able to see over in Hive here that uh, the shipping events table should be there. It's got four columns. And if we just do select star from shipping events, we should see that uh, there are three rows. So that data has been effectively replicated from MySQL into Hive on ADLS. So let's go uh, a little bit further. Let's start the uh, pipeline again. If you're wondering why I'm stopping and starting the pipeline, uh, right now we try and write big files uh, into ADLS uh, for efficiency. And it's the way, it's a way I can get it to 
um, close the file and let Hive see it, even though there's only a few records there. So the pipeline's running. Uh, let's get uh, some data here that we can paste into the MySQL console. And uh, okay, so the, we had three rows there. Those should be picked up within a few seconds here. Okay, so there's our three records in, three records out, no uh, metadata this time. And again, if we go over to Hive here, oops, just stop the pipeline first. We should be able to go over to Hive and see that uh, there should be six records. There we go, one, two, three, four, five, six records. So it's correctly uh, replicating data as it arrives in uh, MySQL. Now we can go one step further. Because we are examining that metadata, let's alter the table. We're going to add columns here for latitude and longitude to the uh, MySQL table. So let's do that. And then if we say uh, select star, we can see there's nine records here now and three of them has that latitude and longitude. So the table structure changed. And let's go back here. And there again, we've got three uh, input records. They had that different schema, those extra two columns. So again, we generated four output records, three going to the ADLS and one to the Hive Metastore. So an alter table command actually was sent to Hive. And again, if we go over to Hive over here, um, let's do the describe again. And we should see, yes, we've got the additional latitude longitude columns and the select, we should have um, the extra rows. Oh, there's only seven rows. Hang on. Let's stop the pipeline. So it um, kind of commits that data into Hive. So it uh, renames those temporary files. Let's do the select star again. We've got nine rows, three of them with uh, latitude and uh, longitude. So uh, there we have it. We have taken the not only taken the data from MySQL and uh, pushed it up into Hive, but we detected that schema change, the uh, additional columns in uh, in MySQL, and created corresponding columns automatically in Hive. Thanks for watching.